Uh, let's start off with the U.S. debt ceiling, the debt scenario in uh, Europe. It seems that we still have a lot of gremlins that could creep up, but perhaps something that could kill all the gremlins is the 14th Amendment. Take us through that likely uh, scenario and whether you think that uh, we could actually see some resolution uh, before August the 2nd. Well, there may not have to be resolution. The two parties, the Republicans and the Democrats, could stay apart. And if that happened, then the president would have to take matters into his own hand. So what could he do? He could invoke what they call the U.S. 14th Amendment. That's an amendment to the uh, Constitution uh, which has previously been utilized, last utilized in 1995. What it allows him to do is to override government and say, if you can't reach a decision, I'm going to go ahead and do it. In 1995, uh, President Bill Clinton at that stage said he had to do something to provide a rescue package for Mexico. The Mexican peso had, had uh, collapsed, the uh, banking sector was in disarray, and of course that uh, that 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 impacted a possible a possible impact on the US banking sector and in order to avoid that possibility because there's strong ties between the Mexican and US banks he said he would rather lend them this uh, this rescue package and avoid a domestic banking crisis now it is it the, the, the procedures are in place and I think that President Obama could invoke this yeah. yes it would be challenged in court but that would take months in the meantime they would get breathing space in the meantime the Federal Reserve could re prioritize uh, what payments had to be made of course top of the top of the list would be uh, uh, foreign debt servicing the interest payments on US Treasuries yeah. and by a bit of managing they could postpone that uh, that very close deadline of the yeah. second well Ian where does that leave us because we're seeing very light volumes in South Africa and in the US I mean we only saw around 8 billion rand passing through the market in South Africa yesterday uh, if we do see uh, uh, the invocation of this 14th amendment does that mean markets are going to stall further until there's resolution or do you think that we could see a bit more positive sentiment? Well, I don't think that's no, it wouldn't be positive sentiment, but le at least it could perhaps help to reinforce a short-term base around about the present levels. There's no strong move one way or the other right now. And, and I think it may take some of the pressure off the world banking sector. And we get a little bit of a ripple through in activity or lower activity in our banking sector uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it would re relieve some pressure temporarily. Arsenal Metal coming under pressure today after the company reported a 63% drop in first half uh, profits. Uh, a company that has been under the spotlight for various reasons. Take us through some of the, the key numbers for you, Ian. And do you think this is at the bottom of the cycle for Arsenal Metal, or do you think there's more uh, pressure to come? Well, I think it may be close to the bottom of the cycle. I think that the pressures are going to be ongoing. But wow, 67% down headline earnings. That is really, it's a much bigger knock than our analysts had anticipated. I think than the majority had anticipated. It seems that they've been mostly hit by, uh, they, they've, had, they've had maintained their production, but they've not maintained their sales. Maybe uh, they've been too uh, aggressive in their pricing policies and other producers have undercut them. Well, you've got to move with the times and perhaps they should take that into to account, especially in their domestic pricing policies. Um, in addition to that, they've had a, the whopping big increases in electricity, uh, wages were up by 10%, and of course they're facing a similar wage increase right now. And I think that the, 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 the activity in the world steel market has tailed off a bit, and uh, there is the over-reliance on China, which after all is a major importer, but not the biggest sized economy in the world. I think really uh, there's been too much emphasis on that and not enough of diversifying which is yeah. perhaps what they need to do. It's so fascinating though, Ian. I mean, you can see what uh, the coal miners are doing and they're looking very good on the earnings yes. front. Kumba Iron Ore looking quite good. And we know coal and, and uh, iron ore, uh, the products that you require to make steel. Uh, tell us about where yes. to from here for ArcelorMittal. Do you think that a lot still relies on that cost plus three contract, which is still under dispute? Yes. Uh, that, that's very important because at the moment they're continuing to uh, Kumba continued continuing to deliver to them at around about that sort of level if they have to go to commercial rates that's going to have a severe impact on their uh, cost inputs and that really is going to mean even more pressure on their margins so they must be thinking about that quite con quite uh, uh, considerably uh, Kumba meanwhile are quite positive they feel that uh, the court is going to find in their favor well we can't prejudge that but it is a 
potential negative impact on ArcelorMittal, which means I think that you must delay considering buying in, even despite the price yeah. that has come down quite considerably. Um, De Beers, which we know, uh, of course, is partly owned by the likes of Anglo-American. Fantastic numbers coming through then. We know that when women are buying yes. diamonds, things must be better. Or at least when men are buying the diamonds for the women, things must be getting better. Yes. But an interesting rhetoric that came through from De Beers was the fact that marginal mines had been closed due to the recession yes. and that Labour is now becoming more aggressive with regards to wage negotiations. What kind of messages do you think we're starting to see through from a player such as De Beers? Well, they say, they're saying already, as you said, they have already closed some operations that were at a marginal sort of basis. And, you know, just the, the increase in wages push them over the limit. If that happens again, there will be more of their, some of their smaller marginal operations going the same way. Maybe very small operators, low-cost operators will be able to step in there. But it's, it, it's a pointer to the overall uh, uh, mining industry. You know, a lot of our, our mines are, are running against very high cost inputs and they can't stand this much longer. It's going to help to make us globally price non-competitive. And what's that going to do for employment? It's going to put even more uh, employees out of work. It's going to encourage the mines to go for greater mechanization. We don't need that. So Ian, tell us about the play between interruptions in the economy, such as the petrol uh, 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 strike that is occurring and the likes of the coal strike that is, of course, imminent at this point in time. Is an interruption to uh, fuel and coal supplies more detrimental than an increase in wages? <laughs> wow, that's hard to answer. But uh, look what happened when we, two years ago when we had the, uh, the interruption uh, the, to uh, coal supplies to ESCOM and we had that, I won't call it a blackout, but we had a brownout. There was yeah. very much lower electricity provided and uh, of course it hit the mining sector right away. They've improved their efficiency uh, uh, since then. But nevertheless, uh, it would have an impact on all of, of industry and of commerce and needs to be avoided. But what the mining industry, what, what, what the employees have to realize is that the average worker in South Africa gets paid something like six times more than the average worker in China with whom we're trying to compete and those Chinese workers have a stronger work ethic they are more efficient and you know if we maintain our place in world markets we're not going to be able to continue offering wages increases at yeah. twice the inflation rate we'll price ourselves out the market